cannot even imagine had I come here and experienced all the difficulties bureaucratically and you know how isolating the experience was in many ways make sure you know your story uh, representing your country um, whether you like it or not whether you're aware of it or not this is a reality it can very quickly become six months of you feeling like you've been living in a bubble but you know you quickly realize people are living their lives Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a while since I did a sit down. I've actually missed this space. Um, YouTube has been an encouraging ode to consistency for me. You know, I started this journey or I embarked on this journey about three, four months ago. And initially I was doing it to share my journey, my professional journey, my motherhood journey and how that all fits together. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions over the years um, and for those who are new here I'd recommend you watch my other videos but I started and sort of just dove in with no real plan and I've been so proud of myself for remaining consistent but most importantly I've really enjoyed how much I've grown how I can come on here and sit in front of a camera, become more comfortable in front of a camera, but also, you know, get a nod and people emailing me and contacting me and just affirming me and sharing ideas. I know my gran is watching, she watches religiously, she gives me tips, family members, friends. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. I'm halfway through my, my goal for the year, which was to reach 500, 500 subscribers. Who knows? We might reach it. We may not. Either way, I appreciate every single one of you who subscribe, every single one of you who share my content. And most importantly, I'm always feeling really encouraged when people who really, really need it um, watch it, share feedback and find it valuable. So thank you for sticking around for this journey with me and for watching me grow, uh, for cheering me on. I don't take it for granted. So if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Feel encouraged to share it if you want, um, but all of it is meaningful to me. So today we're diving straight into a topic that I have been thinking about a lot. Going through it, going through the motions. And it's this topic of being an expat. So for those who are new here, for, you know, and watching my content for the first time, I have a couple of videos where I contextualize who I am, what motivated me to be here. And I'd really recommend that you watch those for context. But basically, I'm based in Berlin with my two children. I have been here for just over a year. And the main motivation for moving here wasn't because I wanted a one way ticket out of my country. I love my country and we will be moving back um, in the foreseeable future. Uh, but it was really for me to take a leap of faith, to expand and grow differently and an opportunity that made sense for my personality, that made sense for my overall professional growth, um, you know, is something that I stumbled upon and I applied and was accepted. And so we took a leap and I've been here basically doing research work and also just expanding my reach in terms of um, my work within the development sector and politics, you know, as a whole. I will get into politics as a whole in a little bit more, um, in a deepened way in, in a video to come where I also explore what types of jobs people can do. But for the purpose of today, I really just want to get into the nitty gritty of living abroad as a foreigner and <laughs> whether we've really gla glamorized this thing and if it's worth it. So <laughs> these are five lessons that I've learned as an expat living abroad for the past year. The first thing is as a person who, this is important, this is important context, as a person who's lived abroad before, you know, taking the sleep wasn't something that was daunting uh, and scary. However, so the first thing I just want to highlight is living as an expat is 110% difficult, at times incredibly uncomfortable, especially as a person of color. Um, and again, this is my lived experience. Um, it is not a journey that is glamorous all the time. You don't get on an airplane and you find yourself in a new environment, in my case with children, and immediately feel settled. It's a constant wave of discomforts, navigating those discomforts and just feeling out of place. You know, within this particular season, um, which has been different from my other times um, having lived abroad, 
this time around i had different needs you know i'm an adult i'm a working adult i have children and i need certain things to just be familiar i needed certain things to feel comfortable and every little inconvenience just added to the list of things that stress me out on a daily basis and so this time around living abroad has particularly felt difficult because simple things like booking an appointment to see a doctor have been difficult for me to navigate around um, how to find a school um, if you'd like for me to get into a video where i detail that process how we registered my child in an international school happy to do so um, how to navigate going to um, the pharmacy the optometrist i was here and i was pregnant going through that process you know um, what bills to pay when what certain letters mean um, how the whole mailing system works i mean it's just a constant web of figuring things out and to be frank i mean to be honest with you in this particular season that is not an adventure i wanted to embark on so the first thing i want people to know um, about the reality of living abroad as an expat is that it's difficult it's uncomfortable and the extent in which it's uncomfortable obviously varies person to person and, and which season they happen to be traveling and you know <laughs> their tolerance for discomfort in this particular season i had almost zero tolerance for discomfort i wanted to be comfortable i wanted life to be made easier for me and that was absolutely not the case the second thing that i've learned in this particular season living in germany as an expat is that it is incredibly isolating incredibly lonely and this is coming from a person who feels relatively comfortable in Germany. I've been here before. I share a very sort of closeness with the country and certain people within this country. But, you know, you quickly realize people are living their lives and people have their own rhythm and their own priorities. And even though there is a community and a large South African community, because I am from South Africa, there's a lot of us here. It can feel a little bit like we're all sort of living life past one another. Um, you can go months without seeing people. You can go months without um, connecting, you know, with people that you hold dear to you or maybe certain rituals, customs, experiences that remind you of home. It can very quickly become six months of you feeling like you've been living in a bubble. And I've experienced this more so as an expat than I've ever felt it in my own you know, country back home. And I do think this is part of the expat experience because you're literally uprooted. Um, and I come from a country which is not as individualistic as Germany. You know, Germany is quite individualistic. Make no mistake, I found that people have been willing to assist and help me out and always ready to, to somehow make my life easier. But the individualistic approach to life that is a reality in Europe is something that you really feel in the day to day. So it can be a very isolating experience. I mean, whether that's good or not depends on the person. Some people need that. Um, sometimes it stretches you. You come out of your comfort zone. You're forced to. Um, you grow 110%. But that obviously doesn't make life easier. The third thing about the realities of being an expat is that I've experienced that people are constantly going to have some kind of impression of your country or where you come from through your reality. And I found myself having to correct, having to teach, having to educate, having to call out, sometimes even being pulled into some amazing conversations. So, you know, this thing of you representing where you come from is a, is a reality, or at least it has been for me. And I'd love to hear from other expats how they feel about this. Sometimes it really pulls you closer to your home country and the people from your home country because you feel a sense of pride. Uh, depending on your reasons why you moved in the first place, sometimes you're not necessarily trying to go back or be reminded of home. Um, but, it, you know, you are representing your country, um, whether you like it or not, whether you're aware of it or not. This is a reality of being an expat and living abroad. This is not even something you even think about, or at least I did when I was living back home. We're all mostly South African um, there's a comfort there and it has really opened my eyes to how I treat people who come from other countries. And so that's something I'm going to take with me 
when I go back home, just extending a little bit more empathy in that sense and not necessarily having to put that pressure on them. Obviously, depending on how it's received, you know, there are people very happy to do this. But I think if you live as an expat in the long term, this is something that is just the reality. Ha! <laughs> The fourth thing that I have learned, <laughs> and it's, it has been the bane of my existence, it has been the thing, the one thing that has tainted this experience for me, is everything is harder bureaucratically. Everything. If you need any kind of civic service, anything done uh, officially, you know, um, that requires you to prove your... I don't know, your citizenship, um, your reasons for being in the country. Uh, in my case, I had to register my child here because he was born here, so he needed a German birth certificate. That entire process was excruciatingly difficult, painful, irritating, because everything takes much longer. We had to do everything through the South African embassy, naturally, um, and having to find a balancing act between whatever is needed by the very difficult German bureaucratic processes systems that are in many ways just illogical and then balancing those out with whatever requirements, delays, backlogs exist, you know, on home ground. That is something that is really difficult and I don't know if anyone could have really prepared me for it. Um, and this is my personal experience, but I've heard from other experts as well that because you're just not at home, things may take longer, things may just be difficult. I mean, there's nothing I didn't experience. I had to prove I wasn't married and that required its own process with a lawyer. I had to prove I was South African, which didn't make sense because how else would I have gotten into this country without, you know, a legal documentation, which was my passport to prove that I've come here for a specific reason as a South African, you know, I had to go through processes that, I mean, a long list of just things that I have never, ever experienced. And I know for sure my life is unfortunately just a little bit harder because of the reality of being a foreigner in another country. I don't think the German state tries to make our lives difficult. I think they have their bureaucratic systems and, bureaucrac um, and bureaucracy by nature is difficult and tedious and very systematic. Um, but obviously there are layers when you are having to deal with that and having to abide to the laws of the country, but also have you know your own things, stuff considerations that you need to make um, concerning whatever is required by your own country so just be prepared if anything I would actually suggest anybody who's moving or considering to move to be overly prepared make copies of all the documents that you think you may not need your birth certificate your birth certificate your birth certificate your ID documentation um, any legal, your passport copies, make copies of those things. Do your research, depending on your situation. Are you moving here with a partner? Are you moving here with kids? Are you planning to be here in the long term? Are you planning to find work here? If you do want to find work beyond whatever reason you're here for, you may need to bring, you know, um, what's qualifications, copies of those, maybe even original documentation for those things. Um, are you coming here as a student and you need to study and there's certain requirements and things? Basically, all I'm saying is be over prepared. Bring every possible documentation um, that you deem as important and research, research, research. Ask, feel free to also reach out to me for any specific things or maybe you may have questions. Um, I think this does need its own separate video, but this is something that has been very difficult for me. And as a person who considers herself relatively, you know, organized and a person who is familiar with the German state and the experience here, this definitely, you know, tainted my experience this time around because I came here with children. And I think some of it was not my fault. Some of it, I think I could have been better prepared. Um, and I could have researched a bit more and I could have considered the worst case scenario a bit more. So I would really just, you know, advise anybody who's moving or thinking of moving to Germany to really just come prepared, do your research and make sure you know your story 
before you even apply for um, whatever visa um, and you're thinking of, you know, coming to this country. Fifth thing is comprised of two things, um, but it really concerns the day to day. The first thing is language. Germany is a German country. If you don't know a little bit of German, you're going to struggle a little bit to get around. Um, we happen to live in Berlin, so it's a fairly international city. Um, but even in Berlin, you know, there's a big chunk of just the population who are not as familiar with German. So, I mean, as familiar with English. And so that can be difficult. Just getting assistance to do the basic things can be incredibly difficult. Um, uh, so the other thing that I wanted to, um, you know, mention on this point is, unfortunately, if you have no interest in learning the German language or you, if you have no interest in integrating into the German culture, if you have no interest in even just observing and learning or, I don't know, if you have no fascination or interest with the German culture or this experience of living in another country, it will be difficult to live in this country. I think there should be some interest, um, and I'm speaking specifically about Germany because I am in Germany, but I'd like to consider that that is something that should be a motivation to live anywhere, that you are motivated because a part of you, it may not be all of you, a part of you is interested in that particular country. And a country like Germany where it is predominantly German, from the language spoken to its systems to just the logical systematic way in which it functions it functions and, and operates in a certain way and your life will be that much easier if you make a conscious effort to learn german i mean for one you can't get access into the country as a foreigner without proving or showing um, that you're either going to learn the language or ha already have learned the language um, but I know that there are cases of people who come here, do language courses, and for whatever reason still do not know the language or struggle with it, and it does make their lives a bit harder. So this is something that has made my experience much easier. I cannot even imagine had I come here and experienced all the difficulties bureaucratically and you know how isolating the experience was in many ways, and then on top of that add you know, this challenge of not being able to communicate, not being able to understand signs, not being able to read certain letters, not being able to communicate. I mean, customer service here is predominantly German. So I would really plea to people who come here to at least be interested in the country to a certain degree, because I think it helps in the motivation to learn the language. Um, and it will help you to a big extent. Um, and it will help, um, it will help you to integrate here in a big way so those are my five things i mean there are other things like this country not being innovative enough digitally you know this country's public transport system yes it works but there are some real big inconveniences when it comes to that this country's postal system um I mean, I could talk about this topic all day. If you've made it till the end of the video, my intention really wasn't to paint Germany as some terrible place to live in. I love it here. I would suggest people move here. I think it's one of the most well-functioning countries there is. Um, but, it, you know, I'm going to keep it real. And I do think that maybe when you are moving, you should consider some of the cons first before you consider the pros. It makes the settling in a bit easier. And in a practical German typical way. I think it makes sense to think about these things practically. So that's it from me. I'll be back with another video next week um, with another exciting topic. For now, please share your comments. I would love to hear what some of you have experienced. Um, and that's it from me for now. Till next time.